Got plenty of room. What would you both think about me speeding this up a little bit? The AVA concluded at 11.47 a.m. Central, 12.47 Eastern Time, marking the end of the end of a U.S. EVA is marked when repressurization has begun and the pressure in the crew lock is climbing. It's at about 1.1 PSI. The total time of the spacewalk today was six hours and 32 minutes. Feel good, Kayla. How about you? I'm good. Can you bump it up a little bit more? I say a little more. Yep, I'm ready for a little bit more. And it is getting hard for us to hear you in here, so you're gonna have to give me some hand signals. I did copy a little bit more. That's steady right now. How are you feeling, Tom? Feeling good. Great. Yeah, I'd say yep. potentially go a little bit higher, but maybe just leave it here. Yeah. I think I could if you want to just pump it up a tad bit more. I'm happy with this as well. Mm, I'm clicking my ears. Uh, up a little bit. Just give me a thumbs up. Speed up a little bit more. Here we go. Mark, if you could slow down a little bit. Copy. Slow down a little bit. Okay, we're getting close to 4 PSI. Again, you can expect an alert tone. Happy. Okay, our next step when we get to 5 PSI, I'm going to move the IV hatch equalization valve to off. We're waiting for that. You can expect another alert tone for that. Roger. Uh, didn't get any Z93 on me. Happy no Z93. My knowledge, I did not either. Happy Kayla as well. Okay, we just hit 5 PSI. We're starting a timer. What's going on now is we're waiting two minutes for the crew lock pressure to stabilize, and then we'll see what uh, difference we get over the next minute after that. Okay. Roger. What do you think? It was awesome. Is that something? Yeah. And you just heard NASA astronaut remarking on her very first spacewalk that it was awesome. This was the 245th EVA for station assembly, maintenance, and upgrades. It was the 13th spacewalk for the year.
for the ISS. This was Marshburn's fifth spacewalk, giving him a total of 31 hours, one minute spacewalking time outside of the space station. This is Barron's first ever spacewalk, so the total of today's spacewalk, six hours and 32 minutes is her record. Since this is the 245th spacewalk, that totals 1,548 hours and 26 minutes, or the equivalent of 64 days, 12 hours and 26 minutes. This is the very first EVA of Expedition 66. That was the uh, mass bolt. It looked like a bit of a beast. Uh, the stanchion mount bolt? Yeah. Yeah, it was. I think it was just um, the bolt goes so deep into that fitting. Um, it's really hard to get good visibility on if you're like really seated and if it's really driving. Um, we got there. Yeah. Baron now recapping with Tom how her first spacewalk went. Not like near the place right. the threads would engage, but didn't quite engage. And so it was hard to tell until I really saw it move. When I had it fully engaged, um, you could actually see that big bolt right. move down. Um, it was hard to know that's what it was going to look like until it happened. That was huge. I think the hardest part of the day for me was getting the, uh, well, those gimbal bolts were off the day before. It was the hardest thing I had to do today. If you ever use that, that collar is just, I think for sure you're at a hard stop and it grinds past that and pops into the full. <laughs> locking collar? Yeah, the locking collar. Yeah. The spacewalk began at 5.15 a.m. Central Time, 6.15 a.m. Eastern, nearly an hour ahead of schedule. It concluded at 11.47 a.m. Central, giving us a total of six hours and 32 minutes. I get good DRT body positioning over those bolts because they're so far inboard from the handrails. Right. right. And um, having the, you have to get pretty high too because it's up on the frame. And Carol and Tom, we had a good leak check, so we're going to continue on with the crew lock repress. Copy. Can you switch your glove heaters to off, OFF? My glove heaters are off. Glove heaters going to off. All right, Tom, let me know when your glove heaters are off, and then we'll press. They're off. Okay, got them. They're, they're off. Now check your gloves for contamination. Let us know if we've got any. Negative for one. Negative. I have the uh, dark smudges I reported earlier, but given that they're uh, black in color, I think we can confidently say that's not C93 paint. I would say no contamination. Same for copy me. in Houston. Do you copy? Houston copies. No issues. All right, Houston's good with that, and we're going to continue on. So on both of your DCMs, take your O2 actuators to IV. Didn't work? Didn't work. EV2, O2 actuators, and IV. And the EV1, O2 actuator is getting there. Is in IV. Happy. Both of you have your O2 actuators in IV. I'm going to take the IV hat. Hatch equalization valve to I think one of the reasons why it was hard to get the uh, graded facet down is I tried to push it down to get it flush. The arm would bounce back a little bit. Yeah. So I needed to get something. I hit one hand on structure. Stabilize a little better. Yeah, or both hands on around the mass bolts. Yeah, we worked through it though. Yeah. I 
kind of expected that to be tricky because that alignment pin you know, can rotate about that alignment pin. Um, so until you get one bolt started, it's like kind of hard to tell. Yeah. The PSI in the crew lock is steadily rising, now reaching about 9 PSI. Your uh, directions for the remove and the install, the top of the truss were perfect. Yeah, that works out surprisingly well, I think. Yeah. I was surprised it was like popping off that soft dock, but we got out there. Yeah. I'm a believer in the gimbal bolt trip sheet that uh, I kind of felt like what we ended up doing should be was going to be what we should do, but the way they marched through it is just uh, really nice. Hey, you guys worked through that really well. NASA astronauts Kayla Barron and Tom Marshburn began their day by removing the degraded S-band subassembly. It's facing Nader. Oh, wow. So it kind of felt like, you know, belly towards the Earth was an interesting perspective to have. There's not a lot to hold on to, I know. Yeah, with your, um, you know, you have your hand on those handrails along the edge and then your feet kind of dangling out over the edge of the Earth. It was cool, though. Yeah. All right, Tom Kayla, we're getting close to getting a DPDT of about zero. When that happens, you can expect an alert tone. Roger. Copy, Mark. That uh, little radio frequency cable was, or I forget what they call it, on top of the septum of the SASA. That was just right there. <laughs> right in your way. All right, I'm going to interrupt real quick. We are going to 1.240, the post EVA procedure. Roger. The pressure in the crew lock now 14.7 psi. NASA yes, astronaut Mark Van de Heij working to open the hatch so that Baron and Marshburn can come through. You take care of uh, steps four and five for the top where you can pick. Houston copies.
Institute IV Rajachari working to get the first spacewalker back through the hatch. Airlock Houston on one. The EV crew is no longer hot mic'd. And it looks like Kayla Barron having just completed her very first spacewalk is the first one back. Chari and Vandehai now working to remove her safer units. The jetpack type backpack that would have been used in case of an emergency was not needed today. Baron's safer unit is now removed. You can see Tom Marshburn still in the airlock, in the crew lock. He's got the suit with the red stripes. Astronauts Kayla Barron and Tom Marshburn began their day by removing a degraded S-band subassembly, just one of many communications antennae aboard the space station. It had lost partial functionality a few months ago, but thanks to several redundancies built in, the crew saw very minimal impact to their operations. They brought a spare SASA already on board, connected to the express logistics carrier number three, and put it in the degraded SASA's place on the P-1 truss of the International Space Station. They got the spare installed, hooked up, turned on, and they did a communications check to verify that it worked. The team here in Mission Control confirmed that they saw the communications antenna online and that they heard the voice check. The spacewalkers restored S-band capability to the International Space Station this morning. They wrapped up the day by stowing the degraded antenna, hooking it up to a heat source and tucking it in for the night with a thermal blanket covering. Kayla Barron was able to complete some get-ahead tasks, including braking torque on some of the bolts on the battery charge and discharge units, and connecting some wire ties. Both are now in the equipment lock. They completed all of their tasks for today, including the get-ahead tasks including the get-ahead tasks. And in the words of astronaut Mark Van de High in the farther part of your screen, they triple crushed it. Marshburn wrapped up his fifth EVA with his career with some kind words, noting that it was unbelievable that everyone was able to pull this together in just a few weeks, and gave a nod to his support team, including EVA officer Art Thomason, our flight director Vincent LaCourt, and all the folks here on the ground, including those monitoring the spacesuits and robotics.
we can Here, Lux Houston on one, friendly reminder to perform step 17.1 for the helmet velcro straps. Chari and Vandehai on your screen, helping the spacewalkers out of their spacesuit now that it has concluded. Following this, they'll take their gloves and helmet off, get the rest of their spacesuits off, and head to a well deserved rest.
Kayla Barron's helmet is now off as she works to get her gloves off. Next up, we're about to see Rajachari as he helps Tom Marshburn take his helmet off. And there we have NASA astronaut Tom Marshburn with his helmet off. This concludes the spacewalk for these two NASA astronauts now that they've accomplished their goal of restoring S-band capability to the International Space Station in six hours and 32 hours of spacewalking time, replacing a degraded SASA unit with a spare on board. The spacewalk concluded at 11.47 a.m. Central Time. Marshburn officially had his fifth spacewalk in the books, giving him a total of 31 hours, one minute, suited up and supporting space station maintenance and assembly on a spacewalk. Kayla Barron concluded her very first spacewalk of her career, ending it with a riveting review, saying it was awesome. Next up, NASA will introduce its 2021 class of astronauts at 12.30 p.m. Eastern Time on Monday, December 6th, from Ellington Field, from right here at NASA's Johnson Space Center in Houston. After completing their training, these individuals could be eligible for a variety of flight assignments, including missions on and around the moon through NASA's Artemis program. One of our spacewalkers today, Kayla Barron, on the left of your screen, along with Raj Achari there in the middle, who helped operate the robotic arm, were selected back in 2017, which is the last time NASA brought new additions to the astronaut corps. Now in 2021, we're ready to do it again, so tune in to find out who these individuals might be Thanks everyone for following along and we'll see you then.